Yeah, and more rain is on the way this week as the showers continue to taper off here today. This weekend storm caused flooding on roads and mudslides led to several street closures as well. Some people who drove onto those flooded roads had to be rescued. There were also several crashes. So a big reminder out there just to slow down. The storm also brought snow to the local mountains. Taking a look at this live camera from the Laguna Mountain Lodge. Wow. Where it appears that uh, snow is blowing around up there. Some snow also fell in Julian. So yes, a winter wonderland here on this uh, Monday in some parts of the county. Glad you're with us and a happy new year to you. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Carrie Lane in Fernetta. It's amazing that it's that time of year again with the snow and yeah. the cold and it's been a little warmer for us. I know this last storm was a little bit on the warmer side so the snow elevations didn't drop quite like right. we had hoped right. but mm -hmm. hopefully that'll change in the future. For it looks like uh, yeah Tuesday Thursday those are going to be two days of a little bit more of impact for us and cooler as well for these storms. Uh, when we look at our totals Julian the three day total from New Year's Eve through today 5.42 inches so decent accumulations out there Palomar Mountain over four inches for our inland and valleys we picked up on about two and in some cases three inches. Ramona 3.29 inches. We saw Santee at 1.5. So these are decent accumulations. Showers are tapering off for today, your Monday. However, we've got the next atmospheric river already shaping up across Northern California. We'll have details on how much more rain is coming our way for this upcoming Tuesday and Thursday. We'll also talk about what's beyond it. Back to you. This dangerous flooding in Northern California this morning after that historic rain and the heavy snow we've been seeing. An atmospheric river brought immense amounts of precipitation and at least one person died. Stranded drivers stood on top of their cars near Sacramento here. San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf was submerged in water too. Look at this image. Meanwhile, at higher elevations, heavy snow caused dangerous driving conditions. The past three years have been the state's driest on record, but it's still too soon to tell how much of all this will help out with our drought. I'm very, very grateful for the rain, um, but maybe not so much so quick. Yeah, a lot at once. Experts are set to measure the snowpack tomorrow. Right now, sheriff's deputies are looking for a driver who hit and killed a man in Encinitas and drove off. It happened early yesterday morning at Encinitas Boulevard and Coast Highway 101. The man suffered major injuries and died at the hospital. Authorities have not released any information yet on that gentleman. Meantime, the suspect's vehicle is described as a dark colored Chrysler or Dodge car or even a van with damage to the front driver's side. Please call the sheriff's department if you have any information. And this morning, some San Diegans are amped up about higher electric bills. Rate hikes just took effect for SDG&E. Everyone in California could soon be paying more as well. CBS 8's Chris Grow live in front of SDG&E headquarters working for you to track these increases here. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Carrie. And look, for those of you that are starting the new year, looking at some maybe budget resolutions, well, you're going to maybe want to track how much it is that you're spending on your utilities because they're going up not only here in San Diego, but across the state. So let's take a look at what's happening out of Sacramento. That would be SB 846. And what this does is that it requires every ratepayer across the state to pony up an additional 3% on their bill. Why? Well, it's supposed to pay for upgrades or repairs to extend and to extend the license of the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. That's up in Northern California. But remember, all Californians that pay utilities will be paying uh, part again, 3% additional 3% on their bill. Now, as for what we are seeing here locally, we told you about this back in October. SDG and E raising rates yet again, this time coming this month here starting in January, and it's going to cost the average household about $34 more per month or about more than $400 a year. We spoke with utility watchdogs about these increases that are going into effect specifically SB a46 as well too and this is what they had to say again about why it is that ratepayers are again forking up more money this was voted on literally on the last day of the legislative session in the middle of the night and uh, you know while their constituents were sleeping all ratepayers in the state of California, regardless of location. Uh, it's anticipated that, that's just an estimate, by the way, of 3%. It could go higher than that. 
And so take a look at your screen right here. This is a portion of what SCG and me put out as a statement in response to some of our inquiries about this upcoming rate hike. They wrote, quote, SDG and E remains committed to working with our customers as prices for a variety of goods and services, including natural gas and electricity, continue to surge across the nation. It's important that we help customers prepare as much as possible for colder weather and higher winter energy bills and that we provide access to financial assistance. Now, for more information about that financial assistance and other ways that you can conserve energy and therefore save yourself some money, you can go to our website, cbsa.com, and click on that story link. Eric and Carrie. Chris Go, uh, Grow, thank you so much. Many of you are also now paying more for water and sewer usage. Increases actually took effect yesterday, and water is up 2.5%, and sewer usage is up 4%. The County Water Authority says the price hikes pay for the replacement of old pipes, wastewater mains, and even future water programs. It is also due to a cost increase for imported water. Now, those who are making minimum wage will start seeing a little extra money in their paychecks. This past year, the minimum wage was $15 an hour. Now, that jumps up to $16.30 an hour. The minimum wage is determined by the previous year's cost of living increase. It has gone up every year since 2016 when it was $10.50 an hour. And other new laws are now in effect. They are affecting everyone from jaywalking to street racing. We're going to break those down coming up at 630, so stick around for that. Eric? Southwest Airlines appears to be back on track after a disastrous week for travelers. And this morning, people still have questions about how they'll be compensated. We've had zero communication from Southwest. There's not been anyone that's reached out, no emails to check in on us. Yeah, it's been a frustrating week for a lot of folks. If you are due a refund, Southwest must provide that within seven business days if you paid by credit card and within 20 days if you paid by cash, check, or other means. This is for customers affected by canceled or delayed flights between Christmas Eve and today. Southwest has a specific section on their website for all of this at southwest.com slash travel disruption. The airline is also trying to reconnect people with their displaced luggage. And we are just under two hours away from the 134th annual Tournament of Roses Parade. Floats adorned with thousands of flowers will make the five-mile journey in Pasadena. Now, normally the parade is held on New Year's Day, but they never hold a parade on a Sunday. This year's theme is Turning the Corner. After the parade, Penn State will take on Utah during the Rose Bowl game. That is all happening at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Okay, keep an eye out for the San Diego Zoo Safari Park flow in the Rose Parade. It is covered in millions of flowers, seeds, beans, and even spices. It features a mama and baby rhino, which you saw there on your screen a second ago. There they are. It also has a giraffe on board. The theme of the float is celebrating 50 years of conservation in honor of the park's 50th anniversary. That's pretty cool. Big stage for them. Yeah, it's nice. I, that, that's and I think they're early on too. I think Netta was saying that they're one of the first like 10 or 15 to go out for the parade. So awesome. that'll be a fun one out there. And it looks like showers are tapering off. So we'll be off to a nice day. I say that uh, hesitantly just because we're still going to be unsettled out there. We have cooler temperatures sticking around. We've got a little bit of drizzle out there and some wind, but this is a better start to our day today than how we started our day yesterday and the day prior with rain, right? So we had widespread rain hitting us New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. Several inches that came down today. We are going to stay primarily dry, but late tonight into early tomorrow, we've got more wet weather that is going to be on hand. It's going to be our next atmospheric river and then another one arriving on Thursday. Low 60s, upper 50s is what we can expect for our afternoon high temperatures with a bit of the sun peeking through by the afternoon. Some PM showers across the mountaintops. That's where they'll start and then become a little bit more robust. Countywide by uh, early tomorrow. I want to thank Barry and Dan for sending these two photos in. I mean, you get a grasp of how we rung in the new year. Uh, first off, of course, the wind blowing out there, still trying to get the umbrella working with a light drizzle coming down in Coronado. And then up in Oceanside, we saw those palm fronds headed uh, down from the trees into the roadways. So uh, it was at times a dangerous commute out there with the inches of rain on the ground, with the palm fronds, with the wind, everything. Uh, 
uh, culminated to a uh, pretty strong storm for us. We're going to, going to expect more rain in the forecast for early Tuesday into the afternoon and then uh, Thursday afternoon to Thursday evening. This chance of rain drops off as we head toward Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Looks like we'll be off to a warmer end of this week compared to a pretty wet start to this week. Temperatures outside right now are in the upper 40s along the coast, low 50s inland. Still chilly outside as you walk out the door, but not quite as cold as we've seen it in uh, days prior. We look at your sunrise 651, so about 40 minutes out. Sunset's going to be at 454. Nice, uh, quiet start to the morning in La Jolla with just partial cloud cover out there. As far as traffic goes, there's just one crash I want to take you to. It's in the San Diego Country Estates area, just south of Ramona. One lane blocked with a crash on San Vicente Oaks Road, northbound at Bar Barona Road. Uh, this is the only thing popping up this morning. Besides that, you could see your smooth sailing along the major freeways. We'll keep you up to date here and on CBS8.com slash traffic. Back to you.